Hi everyone, I'm Ellie from Code of the Future and today we're going to be exploring tuples in Python. So as usual, I'm going to put my glasses on and I'll move you onto the screen. Okay, so we've opened up PyCharm, ready to do a bit of coding and we have a Python file called tuples. So the first thing we're going to say is tuples in Python. Okay, so in the previous video, we've already seen two types of sequential characters, lists that are made up of elements of any type and strings that are made up of characters. So tuples are similar to lists in that they are a sequence of items made up of any type. However, unlike list, we can't modify elements that are within a tuple. So that's the main difference between tuples and lists. So the next thing we're gonna say is conventionally, tuples look like this okay so let's take a variable and we'll call it fruit and this is going to equal now we have brackets like these not square brackets so let's say we have apples and we have four apples and then let's say we have bananas and we have five bananas let's say we have oranges and we have six oranges so this is what a tuple looks like now if we were to say print type fruit then we run this python file there we go we have that this indeed here is a tuple so the main difference between a tuple and a list is that tuples are with these brackets and lists are with these brackets okay so we're just going to drop this down okay so we know that this is a tuple so let's say we had something similar as a list so let's say list of fruit and we would have let's say we have identically the same so instead of writing all that out i'm just going to copy this here and input it into here so we have exactly what is here except it's just with the square brackets and that means it's a list so similarly if i was to say print the type of fruit and then print the type of list of fruit and we run this python file we get that the first one is a tuple and the second one is a list okay perfect so what i said earlier was that we can't modify elements within a tuple so let's say something like okay well we're going to take the list of fruit and we're going to let the first element which we know is apples here and we're going to let that equal to strawberries say we just want to substitute apples for strawberries and then if we print list of fruit what this will do is it will replace apples with strawberries so if we run there we go we get what is here but apples has now been substituted with strawberries. So what we'll do is we'll just say here, we can modify elements within a list. And what I'm gonna say here, we can't modify elements within a tuple. And we're just gonna give it a go. So what we'll say is, okay, we'll take our tuple at the top and we'll say, let's do the same and let the first index equal strawberries okay and notice there's this big it's highlighted here so it, it, it python already knows there's an error and then if we say let's print fruit again we'll run this python file and we have an error here so it says type error tuple object does not support item assignment and that is what we mean by how we can't modify elements within a list okay so we'll drop this down and we'll just delete these here and we'll just copy this and pop it here. So we know that we can modify elements within a list, but we can't modify them within a tuple. Okay, so that's something to bear in mind with tuples and lists uh, and how we can't modify elements within a tuple, but we can for lists. Okay, but one thing to mention is we can actually perform um, similar operations on tuples like we can with lists. Okay, and I'll show you what we mean by that. So let's take our tuple at the top here, which is fruit, and let's ask Python to produce the slice between the first element and let's say the third element. So we'll ask Python to print this and click run. Okay, so Python produces the first three elements within this tuple. Perfect, we, we already established that with lists, we can do that with lists. So again, we can change this to one and change this to five, run again, and there we go. It produces the second element all the way up to the fifth element. Okay, perfect, so we can, we can perform slices. So let's just put slicing tuples, okay, perfect. 
And again, we can do something like, let's recall the first element within the list and we'll run this. And there we go, apples, perfect. So this is recalling elements within a tuple. And this was slicing tuples, okay. So there's some similar things we can do like we can with lists. We can also concatenate tuples together. So if you remember from the previous video where I talked about concatenation, we can do the same with tuples. So concatenation of tuples. Okay, you can say let fruit now equal. Let's take the first, first four elements in our original tuple. Now, another way you can do this is just getting rid of zero because this notation here will count immediately from the first um, element but just for ease for beginners i'm just putting the zero there just so you remember what's going on we can then put a plus which is the concatenation symbol in python and we can create a new tuple so let's say we want to have some cherries let's say we want we want some cherries and let's say we have 10 cherries okay now if i ask python to print this new ask python to print there we go perfect we have the first four elements we had to begin with which are there and then we have added cherries and 10 and that's what that does so that's that's really handy we can concatenate tuples together something else that's really important and worth noting with tuples is if we have a tuple with one element in okay so we're just going to put tuples with one element so you may think okay well let's just assign a variable x you may think that this is a tuple but what we're going to do is we're just going to print the type of x, okay? I'm going to run this. Aha! Python tells us that this here is in fact an integer. What's worth noting for tuples is that if you have one element, you must have a comma. Okay, so if you run this again, there we go, tuple, perfect. So if you have a tuple with one element, it must be separated by a comma in here. So if you remove that comma, Python will just automatically think of it as an integer. So this is the notation for a tuple with one element. And it's something that's really worth remembering. Something else that is really nice with tuples is we can find the length of a tuple. And it is the exact same command that we would use for a, a list. So we will just say print the length and we're just gonna take our fruit, which is what we've assigned it up here. And we're gonna run and it tells us a six. And we know this is our new fruit tuple here and indeed there are six elements within that tuple perfect so when we looked at lists you know there is a way of doing lists where you can put square brackets but you can use the list command to create a list so we can do the same with tuples so we'll just say creating a tuple another way of creating a tuple instead of just putting the, the brackets is saying let's say another tuple and we're going to let it equal to tuple notice it's come up in purple but in order to do a tuple we need to have two brackets so that's something really worth remembering so this will be our tuple inside here so we'll have hello we'll have 18 and we'll have true now this here is a string this is an integer and this is a boolean remember in tuples we can have any type so if i was to say print the type of another tuple which is this new tuple we've made and we click run Perfect, it tells us that it is indeed a tuple. So that's another way of creating a tuple and just making sure that it is definitely a tuple. So you may be wondering, well, how do I append something to the end of a tuple like we did in lists? So that you can do that by making a tuple into a list and then adding an element and then returning it back to a tuple. So I'm just gonna show you how you do that now. Let's say converting a tuple to a list and then back to a tuple. Okay, so we have our fruit, which is what we defined up here. So we have fruit. Okay, so the way that you make it into a list is you will say fruit equal list fruit. If I print the type of fruit, perfect, it tells us it's a list. Okay, so we have this. We now have that fruit is now a list, it's no longer a tuple. So let's say fruit.append. Let's say I want to append some pairs onto the end of the list. So now if I print fruit and click run, aha, perfect. It gives us a list and it has pairs at the end. So the way that we then turn this back into a tuple, very simple, we just say fruit equals tuple fruit. 
click run there we go perfect we now have a tuple that has gone from a list and back to a tuple and we've added an element to it as well so that's really handy so something else that's really quite cool with tuples is we can actually unpack them okay so we're just going to create a new tuple um, and we're just going to call it fruit again so this will override any previous assignment of fruit and we're just going to have apples bananas pears pears oranges and let's just have let's have strawberries okay so this tuple has and what we'll do is we'll we'll do it through python length fruit okay and this will tell us how many elements are within this tuple so there's five okay so we know there's five elements within this tuple so i'm just going to say one two three four five okay and it's coming up with errors but just bear with for a second we're going to let this equal to fruit okay now this may seem incredibly strange um you may wonder what what on earth is going on if i was just say let's print one and let's print two just think what you think is going to happen and we're going to run it and i'll show you what happens okay interesting so we have said to python okay we have this tuple with five elements now let's create this other tuple with variables so notice these aren't in quotation marks they're not strings they're pure purely variables and we let this equal to fruit now when we print one it prints apples and when we print two it prints bananas what's happening is this is essentially saying one two three four five will equal apples bananas pears oranges and strawberries so one the variable one is assigned to the string apples two is assigned to bananas three is assigned to pears and so on and so forth so similarly if i was to say print five we would expect to get strawberries and that's exactly what we get so this is a really handy way of being able to unpack specific tuples something else that we can do is use an asterisk within a variable okay so we're just going to get rid of this print five here and we're going to get rid of four and five and we're just going to have one two three equals fruit okay so if i was to run this now notice up here we have an error um, and this is because we have three variables in here but we have five elements so we can't do that the way that we can overcome that is if, if we put a little asterisk before the three here and we click run notice there's no no error has popped up and one is assigned to apples two is assigned to bananas and that's what they've printed here so what does this three do okay i'll show you if we print three and we run aha three is assigned now to the last three in the tuple but notice it is a, a list so in order to get it back to a tuple we would just say print tuple three and we'll run this and there we go it's back to a tuple so what this asterisk does is it will assign this to here and this to here and then the remaining ones that are left to be assigned will be assigned here so what we could do is we could remove the asterisk from three add it onto two now we're just going to get rid of this tuple here and we're going to run and see what happens okay interesting so one is assigned to apples now two is assigned to bananas pears and oranges which are the middle elements within this tuple so what this asterisk does is the first will be assigned and then this will assign the remaining until we have an extra element within here so similarly if i was to say four what we would expect to happen is one would be assigned to apples four would be assigned to strawberries three would be assigned to oranges and this two asterisk would be assigned to the remaining two in between bananas and pears so if we run perfect bananas and pears so that's a little bit of a, a way to unpack tuples and how you can assign variables to elements within a tuple it's incredibly handy and it's also quite a, a nice thing to explore so so if you have a go at this then explore with the unpacking tuples it's i find it uh, really great fun so the very final thing that we can do with tuples is we can incorporate loops within tuples so tuples aren't that dissimilar to lists really other than the things that i've mentioned and there are a few other things as well but we can incorporate them with loops 
um, and that's what I'm going to do now. So we're going to take this fruit up here that we, we already had and we're going to say, and we're going to say for I in range, let's just leave this blank now. We're going to put a colon and we're going to say print fruit I. Okay, so what this is doing is we, we need to assign something in here, but I'll just explain what this is doing first. It's saying for I in a range that we have yet to assign, print the fruit of that element. So it will start, say if we have for i in range 3, it will take 0, 1 and 2, so it will produce apples, bananas and pears. Let's say, okay, well we want to do all the elements within this tuple, but, you know, say it's a really, really long tuple and we have no idea how many elements are, with, are within it, um, so you can't guess and you can't put a really large number because Python will produce an error because if you produce a really large number and that number cannot be assigned to an index in that tuple, it will produce an error. So a way that we can do that and, and find out exactly how many elements are, are within this tuple, we can just put for i in range length of fruit, okay? And so this will produce the length of what's in this. So this will produce how many elements are within this tuple and then it will print each index. So let's just run this. Perfect, there we go, it produces exactly all of these elements that are within this tuple. So that's a really nice way of inco incorporating a loop within a tuple. Um, just a really, really nice example. So that is tuples. We've explored a whole range of different things for tuples. They are really handy, but that is the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please like, subscribe and comment, and I will see you all in the next video.